Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. So I have got requests to cover some of the protocols related topics like I2C protocol, SPA protocol and CAN protocol. Uh, so today uh, we are discussing about the session related to I2C. So here in this session I will be covering completely I2C. I will try to cover entire almost maximum content of I2C in this uh, one session itself. So that it will be a good amount of stuff to study, uh, make ease for the studying. So in this I2C protocol, at the end of this session, you will be able to understand what is this I2C protocol and uh, what is the basic architecture of this I2C protocol and how the data sending or receiving occurs in I2C protocol and some of the very important topics which will be asked in the interview such as the clock synchronization, clock stretching and I2C bus arbitration and the applications, advantages and disadvantages of course. So this all will be covered, try to cover in this particular uh, session itself. So this is the main thing. So we will start with the I2C protocol now. So what is this I2C protocol? I2C protocol is a synchronous serial communication protocol. So we will understand and uh, remember that uh, in this session itself, we will be coming across so many terminologies. So you will be able to understand that as well. So what is this synchronous? So synchronous is nothing but there should be, we will say like uh, every time like there should be some sync between two of the things. So like sender will be sending some particular data at the same uh, pace receiver should be able to uh, receive the data or receiver sending some uh, or receiving uh, there should be basically synchronization between sender and the receiver that is what we will say. So that is uh, this is actually acknowledgement based uh, I mean uh, protocol so later we will be discussing in more detail about this. So for time being this is a synchronous means there should be synchronization between sender and the receiver serial communication protocol what is the serial communication protocol the the serial communication means one after bit by bit the data will be sent so serially it should be like one after the other serially we will tell so this is the meaning of the serial communication and this particular i2c protocol is multi master protocol so that means basically it is a master slave protocol we can say but here we will be uh, having we can have i mean we can have multiple masters as well apart from multiple slaves so this is the uh, meaning of this multi master as in case of spi it will be actually only one master will be there and there will be many slaves as such but that uh, in spi i will be conducting uh, one more session i mean that uh, i will be covering the most things so here for time being you can just remember that i2c protocol is multi master protocol i mean there can be multiple masters as well and of course slaves will also be there so this is half duplex communication what is this half duplex communication is very important half duplex communication means there is communication between sender and the receiver that means sender can send the data and it will be received by b and b can also send the data and a can receive it but not at the same time this is very important to understand because in that case if uh, sender and receiver are simultaneously able to send and receive the data as such then that will be called as full duplex but what i am trying to say is sender will send the data unless and until the receiver gets the data and that after that receiver can send the data means both direction the sending and receiving is possible but not at the same time i hope it is clear so that is half duplex communication means sender is sending the data at that same time receiver can't uh, communicate with the sender so once it gets then receiver can uh, either one way it is possible at a time so that is what clear idea about half duplex communication so now we will try to look into more detail about this i2c bus uh, i mean architecture so this is i2c bus we can see here so one is scl we are having two lines here scl and sda so this is nothing but serial clock and serial data so this is the long form of this one so this we can say this is completely i2c bus so here we are having for example i have just listed some three we can have many also so master and these are slaves so we can have multiple master also but i have taken one as an example so this is master master one thing you remember it will be usually a microcontroller master will be usually a microcontroller and slave can be adc dac lcd or uh, some temperature sensor audio sensor anything 
so that is nothing but the slaves we can uh, see so here actually when you look into this this is master which is microcontroller adc we are using here adc slave dac that is analog to digital converter digital to analog converter and here we are having pull up pull up registers which are tied to this particular bus so here pull up register why we are trying to uh, attach the pull up register connect the pull up register is the reason is once if we if we are not having this particular circuitry just remember the situation if we are not having this particular circuitry then this will be open i mean not connected so during this uh, once if it is open no uh, it will be floating contact i mean the pins are floating floating means what it's not fixed actually the voltages fluctuate that that means if i remove this pull up i mean assume for time being that this pull up is not connected and if i take multimeter and try to read the voltage levels across this particular bus then what it will be is uh, multimeter if, even if it is zero multimeter will show some floating value like uh, something around zero point or one point something so actually it is zero but we are getting some false values like i can say so in order to avoid that one i am using pull up registers that means it will pull up the value it will pull the value for example if it is 4.99 if even if i am connecting uh, complete 5 volt even if it, then it will pull up so it should know. basically the idea to connect this one is no the value should be exact i mean the uh, i mean false value should not be there so because of even if i don't connect as i already told you if i don't connect this it if even if it is zero volt that means i am not applying any voltage also it will be showing some value so i want to avoid that we are using this pull up resistor so how much value we can use the pull up resistor it can be 2k or 10k or anything i mean 2k we can use one uh, these are all just the example for your understanding so usually we will use uh, 10k uh, and sometimes we will use 2k as well so but the thing is you can see the advantage if we use a 2k register here so we will uh, getting a baud rate of i mean the speed of 400 kbps so yeah it is kbps so if i use 10k register i will be getting 100 kbps so usually the uh, speed of i2c protocol is uh, said as 100 kbps but if we use 2k ohm resistor we can achieve up to 400 kbps so that is a target so this is all about i2c bus and here one thing i would like to tell you these two bus which you are seeing right here now so these are active low buses that means if active low means what if we apply zero volt i mean if we apply zero value then it will function it will be one i mean we are giving one it's like uh, not i can say not gate i mean if i give zero value then it will it is like one if i am giving the input if i am giving one it will be a kind of zero i am giving the input so i can say uh, as you already know we can i mean not so if i give zero it will be one not gate so in the same way not exactly but in the same way actually uh, this uh, active low concept will work so it is uh, if i apply zero that means the bus this for this clock is occupied by one either master or slave if i applied one means that is released condition so this is what i can say uh, so one thing you remember the clock is usually generated by master here so master will generate the clock and in the same way uh, it has to be synchronized so for more details we will study later here so how many now question arises and one more thing is very important is here the address is very important this is this protocol is exactly based on addressing so each slave or each master will be having one address so with that address itself we are accessing the actual uh, slave that is what i can say so here it is 7 bit there are two things 7 bit or 10 bit if i use 7 bit then now one more question arises how many slaves uh, i can connect across this particular protocol so it all depends upon whatever we choose if it is 7 bit it is up to 2 power 7 if it is 10 bit then it is 2 power 10 so these many 2 power 7 means it yeah so how much it will be so that many of slaves we can connect to this particular uh, i mean bus so if i use 2 power 10 then 10 bit then i can connect up to 2 power 10 it will be uh, that much of 
um, I mean slaves I can connect it so immediately we will go for this uh, uh, I mean how the data transfer or receive will happen so this is the basic uh, procedure which I can say you so here start bit is there one start bit which you can see and this is here it is slave address so slave address what it will be actually this I can say this is a format format I can say uh, to send the data so first one is start bit and here it is slave address so slave address here it can be whatever the address of slave for example 0x00012 like that so that address will be written here so that means i want to access that particular slave with the help of this address which is right written here and one more option you, you i hope you are able to see this is r slash w means i am able i am uh, i mean my intention is to write to the slave or read from the slave I mean, my intention is to write the ADC value or read the ADC value from that particular A to D converter. For example, so here this is very important. Here, if it is whatever, depending on the situation, if I want to read, I will express as this and then I can uh, achieve. So after this particular slave address, the next section is acknowledgement, A which, which you can see. So if, we, if this much of data is sent, I need acknowledgement for this one, saying that this data has been sent or received so next is internal register address so this is very important so now i am accessing the slave via this particular address whichever is there here so now i am accessing the slave correct so if i access the slave if i want to manipulate or write or read some value into that particular register i mean that register in the sense slave register so in the slave there are actually some of the locations in that locations there are internal registers okay so those internal registers i want to write some data or read some data so that will be written here actually so these eight bits will be reserved for the register address so this is for slave inside the slave in some of the locations there will be internal registers so that will be address will be stored here so for even for that one there will be acknowledgement and after that actually there will be data the actual data which i want to write so this is for manipulating so this is for data which i actually want to send or receive so this is the 8 bit data i can say and for that also i need acknowledgement and this is stop at last so this a a a whatever you are seeing these are all the acknowledgements so that is why I, in this beginning i told you this is nothing but synchronous serial communication serial means what is you can see here uh, we are just analyzing with respect to definition so serial means one after the other only we are sending so if i send this i have to get the acknowledgement then only i can send this if i send this then i have to get the acknowledgement then only i am sending so this is nothing but the serial i can justify here so synchronous means both the transmitter and the receiver should have a sync basically so that is nothing but the synchronization so here i uh, so usually the clock as i already told you will be generated by the master so that master whatever clock is generated so slave also with that particular fastness it has to respond so that is the main intention so that is this is achieved when there is synchronization of clock so that is nothing but the clock synchronization so this definition is getting covered here so in this way it actually uh, works actually so next we are now we came to know what is this uh, clock synchronization clock synchronization i will let me repeat so it is nothing but the synchronization between the master and the slave master will be generating the clock pulses with respect to its own its own frequency i mean with that particular theme slave should also be responding so that means there should be synchronization is required so that is nothing but the clock synchronization so next is very important thing which we are having that is clock stretching so what is this clock stretching clock stretching is nothing but so for example if i say master is generating the clock with respect to one particular um, speed okay one speed it is generating the clock pulses so once if it is generating with the same time if slave is not able to respond that can also be the situation right so if master whatever i mean I, let me tell you in another word if whatever speed master is trying to request the data or send the data to the slave so with that speed if slave is not able to uh, synchronize that in that case it ha it will go for clock stretching so how clock stretching will be done so after every eighth bit uh, eight bit i mean in ninth bit somewhere in ninth bit what happens is in ninth bit it will actually slow down 
slow down it will pull the clock i mean scl will be made to almost zero so in that case the scl line will be pulled i mean it will be pulled to zero basically so in that case it is called as uh, clock stretching so in the uh, clock stretching in order to slow down the communication so if it is um, if it is very fast then even i2c off can also be done that means i2c uh, will literally stops if the speed with which master is able to send the data is not able to uh, get followed with the with respect to slave then they can definitely uh, i mean pull up to zero and then it can uh, i mean slow down the process of communication that i can say so this is nothing but the clock stretching so there is one more important which is uh, mostly asked in uh, any of the interviews which is i2c bus arbitration so what is this bus ar i2c arbitration as i already told you here i am highlighting that is multi master so that means i can use multiple masters within this particular communication <coughs> protocol so if i use multiple masters suppose they here there is one more master that is m2 if it is connected here and here it is also one of the microcontroller if in case both wants to send the data at the same time in the i2c bus so this is i2c bus if both want to send the data at the same time then what which has to be given the priority because both are master correct so which has to given the priority so this is solved by i2c bus arbitration concept so how it will work suppose say master 1 i will name as 1 and this is 2 so if master 1 wants to send the data 0 1 0 or uh, i will just take an example and 0 1 1 somewhere so if this i mean some more bits will be there but just we will try to concentrate so this 0 1 0 and 0 1 1 is the data which i want to send so if both are trying to catch the whole get the hold of this scl and hdl hda line in the i2c bus so at the same time which one given uh, we should be given the priority to first to transfer the data this is actually i2c bus arbitration concept so now 0 1 we will compare both the data okay first 0 0 1 1 here actually until here if they try to transfer the data at the same time there is no problem in that absolutely so next comes it is 1 it is a 0 so here actually the problem comes so now whatever is there 0 1 0 1 no problem 1 and 0 is there until in this actually the priority is given to this particular thing 0 because in zero itself it is active low so this will operate so scl will get the uh, hold of this i mean master one will get the hold of this line scl and hda and this is and wired concept so this because of this so zero one you can and it one and with zero logical and i mean uh, i'm telling so one and zero if you and what is the result zero correct so zero will win in this particular thing so zero will win means this master one data will be transferred in this particular bus so this is very simple so until here whatever if data is same there is no problem one and zero means and wired concept is used in this particular uh, thing so you can add this one and zero you can add it the result is zero okay so then in this case this zero is transferred means master one data is transferred not master two so this will be communicated so this is all about i2c if you remember this it will be very easy to understand okay so now we will come across some of the advantages and disadvantages and uh, applications so advantages as i already told you it is um, uh, multi master we can use multiple masters but in I, uh, SPI we can use only one master correct so here we will use multi master is allowed in this particular thing that is one of the advantage and there is half duplex communication and uh, actually full duplex is achieved in SPI but still this is one of the disadvantages I can say but here uh, as the one important thing is if I remove this particular slave if I want to this remove this particular slave from the circuitry there is no impact on other uh, slaves in this particular circuit because this is purely by each as i already told you in the beginning this will be having its own address unique address it will be having so if i remove this there is no problem in the rest of the circuitry because it is only removed so that means i can easily add or remove the slaves or master in this particular 
protocol this is one of the major advantage i can say and uh, disadvantage is if i keep on adding uh, more slaves or masters in this particular protocol then complexity hardware complexity increases so this is uh, the advantage and some of the disadvantages of this particular thing and it is synchronous serial is uh, one more uh, advantage and uh, let, let me quickly go for the applications so applications are very important here in the laboratory we will be using accessing rtcs so what is this rtc real time clock circuitry so real time clock circuitry means that can be one of the slave in this particular i2c protocol i can use this as a slave and with the help of master i can get the real time clock reading uh, from the RTC so there is one of the advantage DAC and ADC which I already told you DAC which is used currently now so DAC and ADC uh, can be slave in this particular circuitry master can get the reading or write the reading uh, I mean get the reading from this particular uh, and even uh, devices like uh, LCD and uh, this one so LCD uh, also can be connected as a slave and get the display uh, as such and speakers uh, so we can uh, get the speaker audio we can uh, able to uh, get the readings i mean uh, audio readings from this one and next is power supply on or off also we can control yeah. so in the next session we will continue about the spf protocol till then thank you